Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to continue with the songwriting process of our rock ballad. Particularly, we are going to figure out an intro and work and the connections of the different sections of the structure of our song coming up next. If this is the first time you are visiting this channel, what I do here is basically talk about music production in general terms, particularly this time what I'm doing is documenting the production process of a rock ballad. We currently are at the songwriting stage, but the idea is to document the whole process from start to finish, all the way until the song is ready to upload to the digital platforms. You can go ahead and click on the link that's above here, and it will take you to the first video of this songwriting series. If you haven't done so, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notifications button so that you're aware every time we have new content on this channel. And now, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys what is my method for coming up with an intro and work around all of the nuances and all of the connections of the different sections of the structure of our song. So let's jump into Pro Tools. Okay guys, so welcome back to the session. And what I have here is basically the intro. If you guys wanna check out a detail video in which I show you different methods for coming up with an intro and I talk what I think about intros in general terms and whatever you should do with them and what's good for an intro, Go ahead and check out the video, the link on the video that's above here. It will take you to, um, to the songwriting series of our previous How to Make a Rock Song video series. And there, as I'm saying, I will mention and explain my method in more detail. Right now, I'm just going to show you the result and how I did this particular intro. Which, by the way, as I was mentioning in a previous episode, my idea was to do an intro with based on uh, sound effects. So the idea, the idea that I had in mind was to um, use a ticking clock sound effect that would blend to um, to the drums, uh, to the you know in, in in the rhythm, and then I wanted to also use some um, reverb, uh, shimmer reverb effects uh, uh, using my guitar. And that's basically what I ended up with. Of course, I did some trial, trials and errors, um, but I'm going to show you uh, each, each step of how I came up with this idea. So the first thing that I did was to, uh, I went over to Audio Jangle and I downloaded a clock ticking effect. I listened to several of them, and this is the one that I liked. Then I chopped it using the tapped transient feature in Pro Tools. And I... Um, basically uh, quantized each of those sounds to the grid. This is what I have here. So it ended up sounding like this. Show the show you the track here. So the tick that sounded uh, harder, I, I it is playing the role of the first strike of the of each of these um, bars here okay so it sounds like a three-fourths uh, timing one two three one which is the same as with the drums the same case for the drums i also added a little bit of room uh reverb to add some room to to the clock sound because it, it, it is a little dry and i'm using the uh, valhalla vintage verb this is the default setting i only Brought down the size here to about 50%, decay to 1.6 seconds, and the mix uh, is just 9.6%, and it sounds like this. It just adds a little bit of room. Then the drums come along, and they just uh, go along pretty much with the same rhythm, with a simple pattern. So it is a simple pattern, like, so it sounds like an intro basically. And then what I added was the shimmer effects. And the first one, the first one that I did, the first layer is a C uh, sound, a shimmer uh, effect with from a C chord. And it sounds like this.
it's got a fading effect here it's gonna fade in and it didn't sound quite as good as i wanted so i decided to use um, another layer and layer another shimmer sound and it sounded better to me more interesting and that's uh, kind of what i was uh you know playing around with uh, i had initially the idea was to start the whole thing at the same time like this then i figured yeah i wanted to listen to the to the clock ticking for at least a couple of rounds first and then this second layer here here that i'm adding is actually a based on a g chord so it Okay, yeah, so that's it. Something that I will do when I am formally recording the song is that I will record these guitars and I will plug the pedal with both uh, with a stereo connection so that so that it has a you know a better stereo effect, I would say. But this is the idea and I, I really like the way it turned out to be. And as, as you see, it, it is an intro based on um, on audio effects. Now, one thing that happened is that when the song jumped into the verse, I realized that the verse was sounding sort of like dry and there was an abrupt change. Uh, it, you know, when it went from the intro to the verse, let's take a listen. So, to me, it sounded too abrupt. So what I did is that I added uh, a, a pad with the same uh, junior uh, junior uh, simulation emulation, and the pad is basically a D, a, a a D with the octave above. It sounds like this. Doesn't change throughout the whole verse, and I really liked it. Let's take a listen. You will see that this gives sort of like a con uh, continuity to the to this shimmer here, which is also in C. So let's take a listen. Solo con cerrar mis ojos puedo verte por gracia puedo entrar. Also, this C note creates sort of like a dissonance with the guitar um, chords, and that gives a very cool and awesome. I, I mean, I really liked it. The, a, a character to the verse. Okay, so that that was that's something that maybe sometimes you do things and they turn out to be pretty cool, and I think this this is the case for this particular pad sound that was added to the verse. Now, I use that same same resource of the ticking clock and the shimmers to make the connection between the first chorus and the second verse, which is something that uh, if you have been following my series, I do quite often. So let's take a listen. Same pad, I also have it here for the second verse. And finally, for the final chorus after the bridge, before the outro, um, my idea was to have a drop because we are coming from a very intense bridge. And I decided to use that same uh, resource of the ticking clock and the shimmer as well for this third chorus. So let's take a listen. But as you'll see, I'm only using the, the shimmer effect that, that is based on the C chord. Let's take a listen and see how it sounds. So that clock ticking is becoming sort of like a motive, like a theme of the song that is going to be um, an element that will make the song a little bit more memorable that's what i think it is going to do um, now for the shimmer effect uh particularly in this part i think that i may try to layer to add uh some other layers but i will see about that when it comes to the recording stage right now i'm happy the way it sounds let's um, take a listen to the whole chorus <laughs>
then uh, the outro of the song continues until the end. And yes, that would be it. We have uh, pretty much the intro for our song ready. The songwriting process is finished, I would say. Uh, we will continue to the you know next stages, recording and so on. And maybe um, you know we can come up with some new arrangements later on. But the basic songwriting session is pretty much completed. All of the sections of the song are finished, connections and so on. Okay, so we are pretty much done with our song. I would say the songwriting process is finished. Uh, later on, I could, you know, make some arrangement here and there or some, or some changes as we, as I have done in the previous series. But for now, I would say the process is completed and we can move on to a further stage. So please let me know in the comments below what you think about the approach, about the method that I used. As always, I'm very interested in learning from your ideas as well. If you guys were able to learn something or take something out from this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. That way you will be supporting this channel and we can continue making content. Now in the next video, we are going to move on to what I would call the recording stage. We are going to start working with the drums. This time I'm not going to be able to record real drums. Hopefully I will be able to document that in a later series. But for now I will continue working with programmed drums. I will show you some new tricks and techniques. So stay tuned to the channel. Don't miss it out and I will see you guys on the next episode.